I'm lucky enough to have worked with and counted as friends some of the greatest music writers, producers, performers, and just plain studio folks in this industry. When I'm forced to think about it in doing one of these lectures or something of this order, I've often thought that in actuality my true role in the studio has been that of the fortunate student. The more I've listened, the more I've come to realize that I've learned a great deal in a very privileged way. So, what I'd like to do in the next few hours, we'll take a break every now and then, uh, but what we're going to do is look at my entire life in the recording studio, starting at the beginning of my interest in music, but at the same time I'd like to accomplish something else that's very important, and that is at the end of this sem seminar, I'd like everyone here to come away with a little bit of knowledge that may help you mold your own audio personality by seeing what affected me from the beginning. First off, I think that my work reflects my personality. I am, by nature, a music lover. Music is truly organic for me, as I think it is for all of us here. Music seems to be a part of my body. It's necessary for me to hear good music every day for me to be con content with myself and my world. For me, of all the arts, music is the most glorious. Music touches the heart of every human being. Even those rare ones who boast of being tone deaf have at some time been moved by music of one sort or another. At the present time, it's this kind of interesting, good music, either live or recorded, is available to almost everyone on a scale that would have been unthinkable to anyone a hundred years ago. The real paradox, though, I think, of popular music is that while the making of pop music records has become more and more complex, it nevertheless remains a significant part of our daily life. Technological developments have changed the process of music making over the years, but that has not changed people's reasons for playing and listening to music. It's always been interesting to me and I really started thinking about this when I was going to the University of Minnesota in the 50s, early 50s. In the early 1880s, in other words, over 100 years ago, when Alexander Graham Bell first became interested in the phonograph, and he and his two associates, Chichester A. Bell and Charles Sumner Tainter, applied for a U.S. patent on a machine that cut or engraved a groove in a cylindrical surface of wax. The most significant cultural importance of these very first music recording devices was that by catch, capturing the uniqueness of specific performances, they made much more wild, widely available the emotional qualities of these performances. In other words, the unique sound of a singer or instrumentalist could be widely heard. Their performances could be endlessly repeated without reference to sheet music or written notes. I think to me that's the most significant cultural importance of early music recording. To this day, I think the bottom line really is that there's always been something absolutely marvelous for me about simply messing around with things musical, electronic, or mechanical. I still spend many hours in my beautiful studio at home installing and checking out some 
new or old piece of equipment or recording gear. I do get really excited when new techniques come into view. In 1984, I discovered what the Macintosh computer could do for me. I, know not, I now own four of them and can't seem to live without my Macintosh. I don't know what I did before I had it, but I guess I did something. Another important facet, facet of my personality is that I always have been, always will be a fanatic about details in my endeavors. I really love a challenge in my life. In my work, whether it's a musical or a technical challenge, I think if things become too easy, I get bored and start yawning and looking around for something more interesting to do. I first became intrigued by music and the art of recording music at the tender age of 10 years old. What happened was that my dad gave me a disc recording machine for my 10th birthday. 10 minutes later, I had decided on what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. By the time I was 15, I was working in a small basement recording studio in my hometown of Minneapolis, Minnesota. My summer vacations from School was sent out recording any willing musical group. I've also been fortunate in that I've always known exactly what I wanted to do as my life's work. And I think this early focus of attention and energy has helped me a great deal. I think I'm lucky in this respect because as a result, my energies have never been diluted or sidetracked. 